Welcome back everyone. This week we're going to try some Bacardi 10 Reserve. We'll discuss our trip to Puerto Rico and how this whole rum thing got started. Let's have some fun. Good afternoon. We are back at the Rum John Bar, which means we are going to try some rum. Uh, but before we get start that, I want to introduce Bao again. Bao is back. Hey everybody. Uh, we, uh, we've got Bao uh, geared up and he's got his swag on here. So uh, yeah, we're, uh, he's, looking, he's looking sharp, looking like a sharp dressed man. Got his hat? Yeah. We're back at the bar. We're gonna uh, we're gonna do a little something different. We uh, we have a bottle of uh, the Bacardi Ten, the Reserve Ten. Uh, I know a lot of uh, a lot of tasters or a lot of rum people are not a big fan of the Bacardi because of the Bacardi name and you know um, and everything. But Bacardi to me is uh, is kind of where I guess you could say I kind of got my start in the rum. Uh, on uh, my honeymoon, my wife and I went to the Bacardi factory in uh, Puerto Rico. Nice. And so while I get it, rum companies, uh, they want, I mean, their their pride and joy is going to be the reserve. Right. Right. Uh, but what do you do between the 10 years, in this case, the 10 year aged uh, Bacardi reserve, what do you do for 10 years? You just... <laughs> Out in 10 years, uh, we are going to make some good stuff. No, you can't just sit around and wait. So you do it like, you know, uh, CSD Key and Bacardi right. and Tampa Bay Rum Company are doing. And you make it, you know, like their Gasparilla. And where you make a, a less aged or, or a, a more uh, mass produced or easily mass produced rum. Right. So that you're not just sitting around, you know, staring at barrels for 10 years. And so, yeah, I get it. Uh, you know, Bacardi and the... Um, Captain Morgan's and the mass producers out there, right. kind of a bad name to them. But when you get past all their mass produced stuff and you dig down into their, uh, you know, of course, like the, the Grand Reserve or, you know, some of the other, uh, that was the uh, selects and stuff like that, that's where, you know, you're getting back down to where the distillers wanted to be from the get go, right? That's, that's what their, their heart and their passion's in. Um, and so, yeah, I, was, I wanted to quickly talk to, or just, you know, kind of touch on uh, Bacardi for today. Is that all right with you? That's actually all right. I think Bacardi's actually have been one of the staple names when you talk about rum. They've been around for quite a while, actually, because, I mean, I know when you talk about rum, one of the first names that comes to mind is Bacardi. Right. Yeah, you know, they've been around for how long? I mean, they've been around for quite since, a bit. Uh, yeah, since 1886, uh, as, or excuse me, 1862, sorry, uh, 1862, um, and... The, uh, you know, rum has obviously been around since pre-pirate, you know, back way, 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 you know, 1500s, 1600s. But, uh, you know, 1862 is where Bacardi got their start from uh, Don Fernando Bacardi Maso. Yep. I probably, right. <laughs> probably Facundo, Facundo, whatever. I probably murdered it. I'm sorry. Uh, no disrespect. You Google it. Yeah, Google it. Uh, that's what we did. Uh, so... So yeah, um, he started it. Uh, he is a Spanish immigrant to Cuba, or Sp right. Spain, yeah, Spanish immigrant from Cuba. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in 1830s, he um, uh, migrated over to Cuba. And in 1862, after I guess you know, do the math, 30 years, he kind of played around with rums and worked on a, a kind of a specific yeast that uh, I guess his own blend, and uh, and that's where he started Bacardi. Um, uh, now. If you fast forward the, to a more interesting time, uh, would be the Cuban-Spain Revolution. Um, his son Emilio actually was running, or kind of, kind of had a big part in the uh, the revolution. He was part of the uh, uh, the like fighters, the rebel fighters, and you know he was imprisoned. And, and that's where the story kind of gets interesting uh, when, when you talk about Bacardi, right? They had a, a big hitch, I guess rich history and to the Cuba era. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, we all know what Cuba Libre means, right? So <laughs> I, I, yeah, liberate Cuba, liberate Cuba. Uh, and the drink is a rum and Coke, right? And so makes sense. Yeah. And so here we go. Here we, here we've got Emilio Bacardi who had a huge hand in the, uh, revolution from Spain. Right. And, and then after, you know, the, the whole mess that, you know, the war and the fighting and all that stuff, um, he was, you know, imprisoned and 
uh, banished at one time and all this stuff, he came back to Cuba and was elected as a the mayor of uh, Santiago. Oh, no way. Santiago. 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 So, no yeah. I, so, I mean, that's a that's a quite the up and down, you know, little battle, right? That's uh, quite a history. Yeah. There. I mean, in fun fact, I think they come from a background of bricklayers way back when. Yeah, I believe that's true. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's they're hardworking family. Yes. Now, I would say so. speaking of hardworking, I mean, produce, I guess I was to say, uh, over 100,000 barrels or, excuse me, 100,000 gallons of rum every day. Interesting. In 26 different uh, facilities on four continents. So that is some serious work. Boy, I that's mean, a mouthful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's why I stumbled there for a second. Yeah. I and mean, like, that's, whoa. And I mean, and they're a $5.5 billion company. So, Jeez. you know, when it comes to, yeah, when it comes to run, yeah, they're, I mean, they're doing what they want to do with, the, with their, with their reserve stuff. And, but of course, you know, they're mass produced Bacardi. Cherry, lime, coconut, whatever you name it. Yeah, that's the stuff that they're, they're, uh, you know, they're making money on. But their their reserve is what they're, you know, I think just like everybody else is where their heart is. Interesting. Um, so yeah, after uh, um, you know becoming the mayor of Santiago in Cuba, uh, right around that, you know, I guess you fast forward to uh, it would be the third generation. I think would would end up being is when the uh, prohibition hit, right? Nice. <laughs> so, if you don't know, Cuba became a huge party spot for Prohibition, and um, the, the Bacardi family and the Bacardi name became renowned or well known, if you will, either way you want to say it, to their parties. I mean, we all seen mob movies, right? I mean, oh, of course, okay. you haven't go see them. Uh, They're great, but yeah. Great. But all these families, uh, or all these these Americans, went down to Cuba and party because that's where you know rum was still flowing there. Fun and times. so, yeah, Bacardi just ate that up, and you know they they did very well in, in that time period. Um, and then uh, you know you fast forward a little farther, and and the bottom fell out. Nineteen uh, sixties, when the, uh, the the whole uh, Cuban Revolution started, uh, the Bacardi family lost everything. They, uh, the, um, they basically, all of the Bacardi assets and everything were seized. And obviously because it's a communist com country, it was given to, the, you know, given to the government and the Bacardi family was in exile in the US. Um, but you know, hey, it's family, they know what they're doing. And so they started it all over again in Puerto Rico. Oh, and, uh, and like I said in the beginning, uh, being one of the first distilleries I've ever I ever toured was when my wife and I were in Puerto Rico. And I said, uh, you know, it was kind of I've I've always said that like when I went there it was kind of like uh, you know walking into the you know the gates open and I heard angels and the sun and all that you know oh, it was wow. like because that he was on his honeymoon guy yeah I give him a break okay? yeah, yeah he just um, got married it was a it was a trip that uh, my wife and I took uh, that was uh, kind of something I've always I always wanted to do. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, we went to, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, we stayed there, uh, right outside San Juan, uh, and it was, it was an amazing trip. Uh, I feel for the people in Puerto Rico because of the hurricanes that have gone That's through right. there and the devastation. So, uh, you know, I, I haven't been back. We plan on going back, but you know, if you're there and you're watching this, know that we send you our love. Um. Sorry, all right, enough of the serious stuff. Let's get down to some rum. Uh, Please, I've, that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> Sorry, man. So that's why we are friends? Uh, actually, I'm just kidding. He's actually a good guy. So, uh, yeah, so the, the, the family was exiled to Puerto Rico, so they started building a, um, a, you know, creating a distillery or started producing in, in there, and it quickly, you know, I mean, they had a name for it, right? So it's, it's like... Uh, you know, craft ketchup suddenly stopping, you know, stop making it. And, you know, one place they make it somewhere else, it's still the name, right? It, you, you know that name of Bacardi, and they were, they were big in Prohibition and, you know, from Prohibition in the 1960s. So all they had to do was start it right back up. They are the formula, they just, and so that, the interesting thing that we learned in Puerto Rico was the bat. I mean, so if you, if you, uh, the bat. If you notice, there's a bat on every symbol of Bacardi, right? And the, the bat is a symbol of luck. Um, and it, it also coincidentally, I, I don't know if they coincide, but when they built their, 
uh, if I remember right, when they built the distillery in Puerto Rico and opened it up, there were bats everywhere. And so they just <laughs> like slapped the bat on the bottle and said, let's go with it. And it's worked out pretty well for them. And like I said, 5.5 million, or billion, excuse me, 5.5 billion. They, billion? They might be yes, oh. with a B. And, yeah, they know what they're doing. So good on them. Um, and again, like I said, you know, when you go to their website or if you go research uh, Bacardi or go look up Bacardi, they don't really talk about like the, uh, I mean, they'll talk about the Bacardi White or Blanco or whatever. But they don't really go into like the you know coconut and the raspberry and all that all right, the million flavors right, right 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 because right. that's just you know that's that's just how they are staying afloat if you will or how they're making money while they're waiting for the ten years to pass for the barrels of the of the reserve and so on and so forth so but when you do go there they talk about the the different like levels or whatever. Uh, and they have the carta, and the carta consists, like I said, of the white, the spiced, uh, the oro, and the negro. And, you know, there's a whole list of them there. All the ones that we talked about before, but they, they don't list them all. They just kind of say, like, yep, this is where we do that. And then when they go, you get down in the premium range, which is the, uh, uh, and I do not speak Spanish. You speak Spanish, right? Just a little bit. And the uh, anejo the, and the reserves. There's, there's three different reserves, and there's an anejo, which I translated, thank you, Google to old. So it's old and reserves. Uh, okay. which, so that's uh, to me that that tells me that's where they're hanging their hat. I mean, um, I've got a the reserves, the reserves, right? Um, I've got a bottle in the so this is a ten year old here, but if you go there, you can get the bottle that we got is a I want to say it's a fifteen year bottle, fifteen year old bottle, okay. um, and I should be, I should grab it, but uh, it's a fifteen year old bottle. It comes in a box and everything. It's engraved and the bottle and the, the barrel number and all that and um, so what it's got to be 25 year old bottle now Interesting. Uh, yeah it's so when you go on when you go to their site or excuse me when you go to their distillery you can taste everything wow. and, and so I mean that's where like like I said I was into rums but I mean Bacardi 10, Bacardi Gold, Bacardi 8 all these I have no idea exist and so you go on site and you go there, you know, they get a bar and they're just like, here, try this, here, try this. Let me find but like the, like one of my favorites for mixing, uh, you know, the, something that I would consider to be a spice rum opposite of like Captain Morgan would be their uh, Bacardi Hocart. It is a very smooth spiced rum and it's great for mixing. Um, but it's it's that it's that kind of same thing, and that, that's where we discovered that I didn't know it existed until we were there. So that actually brings me to probably a question some of the viewers might actually sure. have. So w when you go to the bar, like where 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 in the hierarchy is, is Bacardi? Because I mean I know that I mean it's kind of a staple name, and we know they've been around for a while. Fun fact: I actually thought they started in Puerto Rico. I have good friends from Puerto Rico. Yeah, I mean they 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 are proud of having Bacardi. Right, there. right, right, right. Um, but where in the you know in the hierarchy are or you know uh, so popularity and you know I mean popularity I would say there are two I mean okay. one or two right I'm sure it's Captain Morgan and, and uh, Bacardi one and two right. Right? easy um, but I mean as far as like their quality and that kind of stuff I, I don't know actually um, but I mean I would say when you get to that level right they're their reserve level, they're probably going to be on par to almost everyone else for the most part. Yeah. Now, I'm a strong believer that, uh, and I've probably said this on the show before, but I'm a strong believer that um, the smaller distillers are probably a little more in, you know, in tune with what, you know, if you produce five barrels a year, right? You know what's in those barrels, like you right. are you are tracking those barrels, yeah. right? Yeah. Like this barrel here, I am tracking it extremely close but <laughs> when it comes to you know the fact that they like i said they're producing a hundred thousand gallons right. a day that's production that's i mean they're probably not in tune as closely as say some of the other people but um but again like it's still a good name it, it would be i would i would say i kind of look at it like this and this might be a different uh a good way to, to a different analogy for you um right. i look at bacardi and captain morgan as the ford and chevy of it's a good analogy of, of rum, I'll accept right? that. Uh, I mean they're stable you know what to expect when you get it you, you know from from top to bottom you know what you're gonna get you know and then the same thing you know with like Chevy Chevy does what they do well because they can't sell 
you know, a hundred million Corvettes a year, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. fair enough. Okay. Right? I, I, I think that was actually a really good analogy. Yeah, I mean, like, if it would be great if they could, you know, make the money they're making by, you know, selling a hundred thousand Corvettes. But That'd be great. This is not going to happen. That's not how business works. Right. No. So, um, so again, you know, I, I don't know if they have special teams that do the, the just the, the reserves or not, but, um, but I can tell you from personal experience as far as uh, touring, you know, distilleries and stuff like that. I've, I've toured quite a few now, and you, you almost want to call Bacardi a factory at that point because yeah, it's, it is an event. It is a one hundred. It, it's one hundred percent an event. You go. There's a big, huge, green open area. There's an outdoor bar. Uh, you know, you don't you don't walk to the factory and stuff. I think we got on like a tram or whatever and it took us out to the factory. Stephanie. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big area. It's an operation. Yes, and so, I mean, but it is definitely something that is on like my highlight list for as far as going to, uh, you know, Puerto Rico. I mean, we went to El Yunque, the only rainforest in the United States is in Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. So if I you did want to go there, yeah. I did not know that. And it is just like you see on TV. It is humid. And hot, and it, no, it's awesome. It was great. It was super green, and I go to see it. And then, uh, you know, we went to the bioluminescent bay, and uh, we went to uh, Flamingo Beach, um, which is easily one of the. I live in Florida, like we have awesome beaches here, right? But that Flamingo Beach was probably one of the best beaches I've ever seen in my life. And I've been to Aruba and a bunch of islands, so. I've seen some cool beaches, but that one was really like easy top two, three. Well, it's um, interesting you should say that because rum always reminds me of the sand, blue or green water. Yes. You know, like you know your chair yeah. out there. Um, right, and that's kind of the uh, that's the vibe that we have here, right? right. I mean, it's, it's what a rum uh, Yeah, we're we're pirates, but at the same time, I mean, pirates gotta relax after a while. So uh, exactly. <laughs> so. So with that, with that, uh, let me tell you, Grant, this the, the Grand Reserve, and, and this, and I was gonna go back to the analogy with uh, the Ford and Chevy for a second, you know, where, you know, they make all of the, you know, uh, explorers and this, and, and you know, all the Blazers or whatever that you know, Tahoes and all that stuff, they make those in a factory somewhere and they're mass produced on a, on a huge scale, right? Correct, yeah. But when you come to, so like the Corvettes or their, their high-end stuff, it's right. n it's a little more care and feeding to it. Yeah, and so right. I wanna say that this is the same way because uh, the the reserve, this particular Grand Reserve uh, 10 is blended, is a blended, uh, blended in barrels um, and then blended for at least 10 years. So it says 10, but it's at least 10 years. Uh, and then, um, and then charcoal filtered to give it a kind of a smooth finish. Oh wow! So I'm I'm interested in that because charcoal filtering to me is something that I've heard off and on quite a bit through researching rum. Some people do it, some people don't. Some people use different ways of filtering right. it. Um, and and it, you know, uh, we'll see what this one's like. Um, so on that, let's crack this baby open. Please, let's do that. Uh, again, I know as uh, you've watched the last couple episodes. Uh, Shout outs to Mike. Yes, Mike. Mike made it home um, yesterday, but this one does not have the wax. I wish it had a little wax in it, but it doesn't. Let's, so, let's talk about that whole uh, the presentation of the bottle. I, I, yeah. I, I think like the gold gives it this kind of feel like it's premium. I think it's really well done. This yes. is the kind of stuff you want to display, you know, kind of like you said, like your Corvette. Right. This is a very, I mean, so I'll put it this way so you can see the color. The color looks very nice. It's very gold It's almost color. sparkly too in the sun when you look at it. Right. Like almost there's honey in there. Yeah, almost like, yeah, like that sparkle inside. Um, that's a good point. I, I guess I didn't notice that until you started looking through it. Yeah. Through the bottle, you're right. And then, I mean, the, this is definitely not their, their typical uh, label on the front of their bottle. This, <laughs> this is a, it's embossed. Kind of like a, yeah, an etched or embossed kind of thing there. It's pretty nice. Um, Oh yeah, you can definitely smell a barrel in that. It actually has a very unique smell to it. You smell a little bit of um, wood. I mean, the, yeah, the, which is the, it comes from the, the barrel, uh, the oak, the oakiness to it. You know, it it's certainly oaky, certainly oaky. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, to be honest. Um, here I will. So you can see the pour. 
Let's go to waste for the homies. That, uh, yeah, that's for, yeah. So homies. let's see here. Yeah, you can definitely, there's wow. absolutely an oaky smell to it. Yeah. Mm. Maybe a little honey-ish or yeah, honey It does smell a little sweet. sweet. Yeah. yeah, it really does. Let's, uh, bottoms up, sir. Bottoms up. That's, uh, it's got a little bit of a bite to it, but it is, uh... It's a smooth bite. It is a smooth bite. It's, it's, a, it's a very tingly smooth bite, if you will, and I can definitely taste a bourbon-y, whiskey, kind of barrel-y taste to it. Again, this is their higher-end rum, and it, this is definitely kind of a sipping... You could have it neat, or you could have, you know, with a drop of, you know, an ice cube or something like that, and it is definitely a very... Uh, you know, for for in Mike's when, we, when Mike was here, we talked about how some of the rums that we've been trying are surprising because they're um, they're like, oh wow, you really can. This is a sipping man's rum, right? You right. Know, which is you know, in his case, he sips bourbon and whiskey all the time, and so it's like <laughs> I, I feel great because I'm kind of opening his eyes to to, um, to, rum. to rum a little bit while he's opening me my eyes to, to whiskey. So this is um yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pleasantly surprised with this. This is definitely a, uh, there's nothing, I would say, uh, you know, there's nothing that uh, jumps out at me other right. than the, the whiskey barrel, but um, but it's pretty good. I would say there's a little bit of a hint of like, you know, a sweetness to it, not too much. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I wouldn't say exactly like that thickness of honey, but there's a nice, it's, again, it's very balanced and uh, it gets you that nice tingle yeah. on the tongue and it just, seems that it would pair well like with you know with, uh, with mixing yeah you know? so this is i mean this kind of goes par for their i mean on the back of it and, you know it talks about caramelized vanilla and, and that type of thing which is oh, I, could, I, I can i can yeah, definitely yeah. pick that up so there we have it uh again i'll be hiding this bottle from you guys sorry about that so there we have it the the, the Bacardi grand reserve 10 uh 10 years plus it was pretty good for uh what most people think Bacardi and, and that was kind of what I wanted to do those days is show that Bacardi is more than just your average road you're mixing yeah. yeah so it's been around for a while and this is probably a good time to say that uh, if you guys like what is being done here yeah. from John I certainly enjoy uh, being part of this uh, definitely subscribe to this with friends and do some right now so if you like what's going on here go ahead I mean Just let us know. Uh, and again, if you want the swag, uh, send us a note, email, message, whatever. And the marketing director is all on top of that. She will get a hold of you and work that out. That's right. Thank you, to the marketing director. You're doing a great job. So until then, uh, until next week, guys, uh, sit back, relax, have a drink, and uh, enjoy the ride. I know we will. Cheers. <laughs>